Hey everyone, I'm Kim, the mom boss behind Emory and Kay. Happy September 1st. If you are a Harry Potter fanatic, you know that today is one of the greatest days in the Wizarding World. It is Return to Hogwarts. So of course I had to come on and bring you guys a Harry Potter inspired Tumblr tutorial. I'll go ahead and put a picture around the screen now for you to see. So for some of you, this design might look similar. I actually created it about two years ago. It is the first Tumblr that I ever had go viral. I cannot tell you guys how many of these I had to make and people still message me asking for this design. <laughs> so back in the day when I made this Tumblr design, I actually hand sliced each one of the bricks with double-sided tape. Um, fast forward two years and the Tumblr world was introduced to double-sided adhesive sheets. Um, which is life-changing for this design. It makes things so much faster. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do the split cup, how to do your brick wall. We're gonna make some custom glitter mixes because that is the greatest way to set apart your designs from others is to make your own custom glitter mixes. We're gonna use printed vinyl. We're gonna use real book pages, but don't worry, no good books were harmed in the making of this tutorial. Uh, so as always, I will list and link everything I use in the description box below. I'll also have a few discount codes for you down there as well if you wanna save on some of the goods. I think that's that, let's get to it. As always, we're gonna start with our fully prepped and painted cup. I'm using a 30 ounce skinny from Hog. This is a straight cup, so there is no taper, and I have painted it white. So this is a template that I created when I made this design. So the left side is four inches, the right side is six, and the top is four and a half, and then that bottom diagonal line is just the bottom of each side lines meeting, if that makes sense. Um, so if you're using a different size cup, you can alter you know, the template a little bit to fit the tumbler that you're using. Just make sure that you do a test cut on a scrap piece of vinyl before using your patterned vinyl. So now I'm gonna flip my template over and I'm gonna trace it on the back of my printed vinyl. This printed vinyl is from 143vinyl.com. It used to be 651 vinyl. The Glitter Guy also has a really cute um, wizard pattern vinyl that is similar to this if you already order glitter and supplies from them and you want to save on shipping. So once we cut our vinyl out, we're going to go ahead and apply it to our cup. So as you can see, I have the bricks on the other side. Don't worry, I'll show you guys how to apply those, um, but I thought for the sake of the flow of the video, I would show you cutting the vinyl and applying it. Um, in a row and then we will move on to the bricks. So because we have those bricks on there already, we're just lining up that vinyl in between them. There's a little bit of space on each side of the bricks so that they don't overlap. I'm gonna use a little bit of painter's tape to hold one side of my vinyl on my tumbler. I'm gonna go to the other side, peel back a little bit of the backing and then I will use my little vinyl squeegee tool to push my vinyl onto my tumbler. Uh, this is very similar to how I wrap my tumbler in vinyl or how I apply my tacky tape. Um, pretty straightforward. So you're going to go ahead and push down that little strip. I always start in the middle and then do the edges. And then we'll remove that tape. And the thing I love about printed vinyl is you really don't even have to pull the backing. It just slips off so easily. So I'm going to take my little vinyl squeegee and literally just I'm pushing it on there, kind of working from the middle out to the edges. If you end up with any little tiny bubbles, just carefully pop them with your weeding tool and then gently push them down and nobody will ever know. So boom, your vinyl is on. Now I will show you guys how I do the bricks. So when I first created this design, I hand placed each one of those bricks using double-sided sticky tape and it took forever. But now we have tacky tape from the glitter guy and this incredible template from Ellie's Crafty Co. So you can find this in her shop. I of course will have it linked. And since this is going to be a split cup and I'm using half, I'm actually gonna duplicate her template. So I've sized it down it's about five by four and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it and add the second one to the bottom of the first one. And then I wanna flip it horizontally so that those bricks aren't matching up. I'm going to highlight them and I'm gonna weld it together so that it gets rid of that center seam. I don't want it to cut that. I want this to look like just one cohesive piece. 
So once I have that finished, I am going to load my tacky tape. I use a Cricut Maker. I will list um, the different settings for various machines that I've kind of collected along the way and stolen from some Tumblr friends um, so that you guys can get yours cut out correctly. So now that we have our bricks cut with our tacky tape, I trim around the edges with scissors and we're gonna go ahead and wrap it on half of our cup. Because this was already cut to size for half of our cup, all you have to do is make sure that it is on there straight. I use a little sewing clip at the top to hold that and then this little piece of painter's tape at the bottom just to make sure that it stays on there nice and straight because this stuff, if you get it on crooked, is no fun to remove. <laughs> so we're going to apply our bricks similar to what we did with our vinyl. I'm just going to carefully peel back about half an inch to an inch of the backing and fold it down and we will go ahead and press that onto our cup. So I can't tell you guys how much time having this tacky tape and template saved for this tumbler. I made so many of these tumblers and hand placing all those little bricks with pieces of double-sided sticky tape was so time consuming. So this is such a blessing to have this. It's so much faster. We're going to just get this template on there and then we'll glitter our bricks and that takes no time at all. So the glitters that we will be using um, are two custom mixes and the colors are all from the glitter guy. I will list them below. So I was going to do measurements for you guys, but I don't actually measure. I just kind of dump and mix and I just kind of go with whatever looks good. Um, that is another really fun thing about this is that the glitter is totally unique to your tumbler. So it really will set it apart. So for colors, we're gonna do two different bricks. We're gonna do a lighter one and a darker one. So my lighter one, there's Sands of Time, there's some ice and some pencil. And then the darker glitter mix is actually the lighter glitter mix, but I just mix in a little bit of Black Cat and um, Anchorman, which is a maroon. And you just wanna add in a little bit of those two darker glitters at a time. We don't want it to be significantly darker than our lighter brick, just a little bit darker. So now that our template is on there, I just wanna go over, make sure there's no little air bubbles. Occasionally I'll get those. And just like with my vinyl, I will poke them with my weeding tool and just gently push them down with my fingers. So now we really start to see this tumbler come together. We're gonna glitter our bricks. So I just showed you, we have our two brick mixes that we've made. I'm gonna start with the darker one. And I'm going to take my weeding tool and just remove little random bricks all along my tumbler. I don't have a method for this. I don't go in with a plan. I just truly do this random. The only thing I keep in mind is that I want less dark bricks than light bricks. You could, of course, do more dark than light. It's just kind of what you find aesthetically pleasing um, in the design, and I prefer less dark and more light. So I'm just gonna go through, make sure you're alternating. You kinda wanna pay attention, make sure you're not creating a pattern. That's the biggest thing that you want to avoid because like a natural brick wall, or I guess normal, it wouldn't really be natural, but <laughs> like a normal brick wall, um, typically they don't have a pattern. They're just kind of thrown up there. So just let your mind relax a little bit, remove those pieces, and then go ahead and use your darker brick mix for the ones you've removed. And then after you do that, you can brush it off and then you can go ahead and repeat the process remove the rest of the bricks and put on your lighter brick mix.
Once you have all the glitter onto your bricks, we're going to move on to the book pages. Uh, so I use real book pages. Please don't come at me for that. These are books that have been rescued from going into the trash. They are missing covers and pages. They have severe water damage. Some of them like half the book is missing. Um, I always get them secondhand or I rescue them. Um, from being thrown away. So I just kind of flip through. I choose just kind of chunks of the book that kind of stand out to me at the time. I cut them with scissors just roughly. It doesn't have to be exact. And then I'm going to take my lighter and I'm just going to carefully light the very edges of my book pages. Now typically when I do this it is over my kitchen sink so that if like my flames get out of control or anything I can just drop it right into my sink for the sake of this video. I'm showing you um, just over my table, but just be safe when you're doing this. <laughs> so you're gonna repeat the process with all the little pieces that you've cut out. You'll need three to four, depending on how big, um, how big the sections are that you choose. So we're gonna apply these with Mod Podge and we're gonna put a thin layer of Mod Podge under our book pages and apply them to our cup. The biggest thing with this part is you wanna make sure you don't have any bubbles under your book pages because they will show under your epoxy. So I do kind of lay them out before I apply them to my cup just to figure out where I want them. I personally like when they overlap each other a little bit. If you don't want them to overlap, you can certainly make sure that they each stay separate. This is just kind of what you prefer and how that looks. So my phone, I don't know what happened here, but it cut off some of my video. So it's not going to show you how I apply all the book pages. I'm not really sure why that happened, but after I have my book pages on, I'm going to go over them with um, like three or four good coats of Mod Podge. I want them to feel almost smooth. So here I'm like re-recording because it cut off some stuff. I'm not sure. But after you've gotten your three or four coats of Mod Podge over your book pages, I'm going to go you're gonna go in with a smaller paintbrush and paint those remaining white spaces and then you're going to glitter them. So we'll use Mod Podge, go over those white spaces. I use Black Cat with some ice mixed in because Black Cat is a matte black and I want it to have a little sparkle. So once your glitter dries, you're gonna go in and do two coats of epoxy so that your cup is pretty smooth. And then once that's cured, we will move on to the decals. So this design I came up with two years ago, so it's been a while. Um, I know that the nine and three quarters decal and the Hogwarts silhouette you can find on Etsy or Google. Um, I can't link where I got them because my Etsy won't bring up my purchases that far back. Um, so just search on Google for those or on Etsy for those and you'll definitely be able to find them. So first we're gonna do pinstriping. And these are, um, 0.20 and then I just make them longer than my cup because I prefer to trim them. So we're going to do our pinstriping down each side of our brick seams and then we're going to do that third one right where that printed vinyl and that glitter um, meet. And then I will use my X-Acto knife to trim this third one so that it's not overlapping because that will really show um, under our epoxy and we don't want that. All of my decals I cut using the Oracle 651 matte black. You can do gloss black if you want or you can um, do a colored vinyl, totally up to you. I've just always stuck with the classic black. So we're gonna go ahead and, like I said, trim this third little stripe here. And then we'll go ahead and move on to our nine and three quarters decal. And that video I sped up quite a bit because <laughs> Every now and then when I put on this decal, I have the hardest time getting the measurements right. And this one I had to measure so many times. It was very frustrating and it took me forever. So I <laughs> cut this video a little bit and I sped it up a little bit, but I'm going to measure those corners and I want to measure to the sides of the brick wall because I don't want it to be super close to one side, not to the other. So I want to make sure that those are even and then I'm going to measure my decal um, from that same corner up to the top of my cup on both sides to make sure that it's on there straight. So once I have it on there straight, I do the same thing I always do when I apply my decals. I'm gonna carefully peel that backing away. I have that long piece of transfer tape to hold my decal into place. And then I will push it down 
in the middle and then out on both of the edges. And that one will be done. Now, after this, we're going to move on to our Hogwarts silhouette. And you don't have to use a piece of transfer tape to apply this. I just prefer to because I think it makes it easier. So I'm gonna line up the corner there, kind of showing you with my stripe. The other side you'll see is a little bit too short. That's okay. Um, I don't remeasure and adjust this silhouette each time I do this cup because the measurement will always be a little bit different depending on how much epoxy is on there. So I'll show you guys how to fix that with some tape. I am using just black electrical tape. You could also use painter's tape if you wanted. That's totally up to you. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just trim that little, those pinstripes on the bottom um, just because I don't want that overlap underneath my paint because you will see it. So go ahead and trim those, remove those little pieces. This 651 vinyl was so sticky, it was a nightmare to remove. Um, I've never had issues with 651, but apparently this was a night for me to have it. Usually if I put it on and take it off pretty quickly, I don't have issues, but this was so darn sticky. So <laughs> you can see I put on my electrical tape. I just kind of did that straight along the bottom. I left just a little bit, maybe like a six of an inch. I don't measure it, I just kind of eyeball it. And then I use my X-Acto knife to just trim almost like a little wavy hill um, so that I don't have that weird blunt edge. I'm gonna repeat the process on the top, leaving that little rim like a six of an inch, um, an eighth of an inch, whatever you decide doesn't have to be perfect and I'm going to trim the little extra pieces of my pinstripes on the top and then we're going to go in with some acrylic paint this is just black now originally with this design I did alcohol ink I searched everywhere and I could not find my black alcohol ink anywhere so if you don't have black acrylic paint and you have black alcohol ink literally do the same exact thing I am using just a little piece of a magic eraser and I'm just going to rub it onto that top rim and then I'm going to rub it onto my little silhouette here of Hogwarts. Make sure that you're getting into all those little crevices and peaks in the castle so that you don't take off your, um, your little template and then realize that you missed a spot because that's no fun. Um, so... We're gonna do that, go around that bottom rim, and then we're gonna do the bottom. The only thing I make sure to do is I want to pull my magic eraser, and this is the same with the ink. When I'm doing the Hogwarts, I wanna pull it um, just down. I don't go side to side, I just pull it down so that it all kind of flows together and looks better. So make sure that you get the bottom. And then once this is done, if you're using alcohol ink, it will dry pretty much immediately. You don't have to wait with this paint. You can wait just a few minutes for it to dry. And then you wanna remove your tape and you wanna remove your stencil. If you have any bits of ink or paint that have kind of um, like leaked under your tape, you can just take a Q-tip and a little bit of acetone and it will rub right away. So I sped this up too because this literally was so hard to pull off of this cup. I don't, this vinyl is like really working hard tonight. Um, so just make sure you check uh, in those little dips in the castle. And after that, you are ready to finish it off with two coats of epoxy. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, I would appreciate a thumbs up on my video. If you want to see more tutorials in the future, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I do try to upload a new one every single week. Thank you so much for watching, happy return to Hogwarts Day, and until next time, happy crafting.